He's like, no, but it, this is almost like a, if I could arrange it, would you spar Danny? <laughs> not for nothing. Not for nothing. Like, no one no one would watch it. No one cares. And oh, then what I started are you thinking. Everyone listen. 250,000 people right now are I like, go, in. well, here's my, my thinking. I'm Way like, in. I go. Maddie boy shaking his head. I go, like, let's I'm, get it on, bro. I'm, I'm 15 <laughs> years. Yeah. I'm like, I'm 15 years older. Right. So is he. So, yeah, so is he. I'm maybe 15, 20 pounds heavier. Okay. I've now n- okay. not religiously, but I've I've taken boxing lessons and I've done t- for fifteen years. Okay, so I'm a little bit more for... fifteen years. Okay, Danny got me and into fighting and Krav Maga right? and, and all that stuff. But you roll, right? Yeah, but I do more Krav than anything, and now I don't do anything because who's got that type of time? But fifteen years later, I'm more stronger, powerful than I was then. The question is: Is Bonaduce? Now we're like pre-fighting. Is he is he in shape? And now he's also roided. He's got nothing to lose. If I sparred with him, he would try to kill me, hands down. So I told my wife this. You know, just now we're just talking, and she forbid it. She goes, "You're not. You're, you you can't fight him." And I go, "What?" I go, "What it, kind of fight? Hold on a second. What kind of fight? Like street? You gonna put on gloves? No gloves. I, I do like, oh, MMA gloves or boxing? No boxing match. But keep in mind, Dan Danny's a Chain huge boxer. Smoke. Yeah, but huge he's a huge smoker. boxer. And he's fought forever. And Does he, he have wind me. like my like Mayorga smoked? But he didn't give a shit. He could box. No, but he never got winded in a boxing match. This but you was- think? Hold on. Do you think if you dance for three rounds, do you think Bonaduce's hands are still going to be up by his chin? He comes at. He'll keep coming and he'll come and he won't <laughs> stop. <laughs> Why can't you just keep circling away from the power hand? But it's only boxing. You're saying so you can't take it to the ground. Only boxing. You know how elephants, when they get chained as kid, uh, when they're babies with uh, chains on them, and then that little chain holds them back? Yeah. Who does it? Bonaduce, to this day, scares the, the, scares the bejesus out of me. Like, I even, even now. But yet, is it a challenge to go, okay, I'm only 42. I'm in decent shape. Could I do it? But the, the wife said he will try to kill you, which he would. He, it's a better story for Danny yeah, to kill me. Yeah, but if you get me. knocked out, he's not going to jump on you and smash he, your face in, is he? I can't promise that. All right, all right, let's. Let, all right. <laughs> I but I like, I, I like gra- the the thing that makes it fun is the ground rules, right? So there is a referee. It's a sanctioned bout. Mm-hmm. Okay. So if you get knocked out, it's over, and the referee's going to get between the two of you. So then he's going to have to kick the shit out of the referee too, and then the fans are going to throw chairs in the ring. He broke Donny Osmond's nose. He would. Ah, uh, really? He would. But that just shows you the level. Would you ever think about breaking D- Donny Osmond's nose? No, because I'm not a creep. I'm not a jerk. He broke down. Uh, what's his? What's his favorite? And Danny's movie? always been very cool to me. Always cool to me. I remember when he's on the Corolla show. Never not cool. But I, I watch. I would definitely not fight him. But I know I would not fight you either. I watched Danny try to fight a row of people. A row of people. We were at a Matchbox Twenty concert, and you know how those <laughs> concerts pop off. You know, you go to a Matchbox Twenty concert, you take everything out of the car, you don't leave because a lot of yeah. there's going to be a lot it's of like fights. Going to see Nickelback. So me and Danny are walking. We're at Pine Knob. Um, Matchbox Twenty, <laughs> shit's popping. <laughs> Whoa! It's three a.m. Almost pretty lonely, and we're <laughs> we're walking, and these two guys who probably were dragged to Matchbox Twenty with their wives. Their wives said, "You're coming to this concert." As we walk by, one of the guy goes, "You guys suck." Right, we're just walking to our seats with at our radio station, and Danny goes, "What?" And he goes, "You guys suck." No, that was Danny's voice. The guy says, "You guys suck." Bonnie just you says, guys what? suck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then Danny goes, "What'd you say?" Danny gets to the row. I won't forget this. Uh, it was row JJ. Danny takes off his shirt. <laughs> uh, white guy. That's a white guy's fight. And challenged <laughs> the entire row. Literally said, "Anybody on row JJ want to come up and, and take?" Thinks I suck. Now we're at a station event. Like this is our Does radio he go and station. Take the Bonaduce. And take the. So I saw him fight a row. He's not afraid of. But a they, human being. So they. But they did stand up to fight. No, it was a lot of guys sat there, and the wives like, "Don't, don't sit down." I would have respected the row. Like, I always. <laughs> anytime you hear about that happening, it's always a story about how the guy goes. Let me tell you something. Every single person on this bus wants to fight me. Let's go right. And everybody just sits on their hands. I want the story where the guy goes. Anybody in this? <laughs> yeah, yeah. The entire row, row like, at once. enough where Rob Thomas stops singing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, That's, what's going on up there? Yeah, not... yeah I, guess the, I guess. I guess it happened at some Dodger games or so. I guess it does happen, uh, right? Boom. Yeah, yeah, that's a bummer. They just, they yeah. curb stomped that fucking guy. Oh, Dodger I didn't. Need, 
No, it literally. Oh no, I was just, I was just like making it matter factly. Oh no, like, yeah, that kid, uh, and I wasn't really the kid last year opening day. Stowe is his last name. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. A bunch of Do- he was wearing like Giants stuff. Oh, and a bunch yeah, of Dodger yeah. fans like actually, I think he's. It's pretty bad. Yeah, but it's so it was weird here. It was such, it made like national news, but in L.A. like we're it, it's not L.A. I would go to a Dodger game wearing my another team's jersey. Wouldn't even think twice. Yankee Stadium, like, sure, they're going to be like, take off your fucking yeah. Red Sox jersey. But yeah. if you go to Oakland and wear that shit, you are getting in a fight. Right. And there are just some, like, Shea Stadium, they're just degenerates. Now it's gone at City Field. But there's some town, like, nobody gives a shit if you're at Coors Field in Colorado wearing a Dodgers jersey at a Colorado Rockies Tiger game. hat everywhere I go. No one, Yeah, you know. Because they know you, they know that you kick the shit. You, they know you issued the challenge to fight Danny Bonaduce yeah, on more stories. He's gonna, yeah. Uh, so I told my wife that, and she says, "No, he'll kill you." And then in my brain, I started thinking all these things, and then we started playing just a hypothetical fun I like game. These games. Fun game. Let's add some money to the equation. No yeah. money was offered, but now we're just making it. Now I'm talking to my wife. I go. Now I don't know if I'm mad because my wife gave me an ultimatum, and I go, "That's just what. That's why Rocky got his ass kicked." If Adrian, you can. Win. Yeah, if she would have just said you'd win, he would he wouldn't have had to fight everybody twice, or he would have beat everyone's ass and wouldn't have brain damage and all that stuff wouldn't happen. So I go for Tommy Morrison. Tommy Morrison at HIV. Yeah, two thousand dollars. Would you? What I don't. Ask? Let me ask, see. It's single guys always say yes, but I go it's two thousand dollars worth. Now, now keep in mind, if you're a married guy, you're dealing with having to deal with shit from your wife, which will hurt more than getting smacked as hard as you could. You know, if you go against her wishes, two thousand dollars seems a real tiny. F- that's like so. You would say no to, to, but let's say your wife said 20, no. You can't. I'm so- no, but if we were to increment it up, let's say there's a guy that in, let's just say an eighth on grade on the table. Okay, and and you go to your wife. I want to fight him, and then she forbids you. She says over you're not. All right, and then you go, and then a promoter comes in, and they go, well, listen, honey, I can make five thousand, and she's no. still saying no. No, not you. Let's say you're you're no, I to you're me. in for for two hundred bucks. You would do it for a t shirt. Oh, me? Because then this is the hypothetical. At one point, then do you lie and go? Okay, I got a. I'm in Columbus, Ohio, at at the Funny Bone, and then you go off and fight them, and then you come back with fifteen thousand, and you're not dead. Is she mad? You see the hypothetical. I'm trying to figure out. Yeah, Chris, you know, Matty Boy is a good point. You bring your wife home, a pair. That's if you make it home. Five, six and a half. Your wife has small feet, right? I don't even know. So, no, no. Big. John, you got to know got, that She's got cold. 10. She's got 10. Size 10. Size man, 10 a man's 10. <laughs> <laughs> She's a husky fella. But now you just got beat up or possibly not just to get your wife something. But it you're seems hypothetical like a long when your road. friend started at two grand. Like you would think like. No, nobody started anything. We were just oh, hypothetical. Right I'm your friend. I'm saying right okay, now. Okay, like two grand. Yeah, well, two I wouldn't grand. do that for because you'd have to get in shape. Okay. Tell that he's talking shit and you're sending her on. That that's the thing. Wives don't care if people are talking shit about the wife. What most the good? All right, let me rephrase that. Right. Good wives, if someone says shit about your wife and it makes you crazy, mm-hmm. a good wife says, "Who gives a shit?" And a good wife, conversely, when they talk shit about you, go bananas. And you don't give a shit. You're like, what the fuck do I care what Danny Bonducci says about me? Right. And then your wife's like, no, fuck that. Get in the gym. Get your shit together because we're fighting this guy. I just mailed a check for $2,000 to make sure the fight happens. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we get a take of the door. We get yeah. someone to the gate and I'm we selling t-shirts. It's, it's, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, but don't, is your you wife- You see me with a real baggy shorts say heifer and a reap on the ass going, what am I doing? Golden. I don't want to be some bad tire company. Like- are there bad tire companies? I don't think so. I don't know. Yeah. Your wife's your cut man cutting you on purpose just to stop the fight. I still have. Check. Remember Rocky when he like he's having flashbacks and I think uh, Ivan Drago like no. Which one is it? Mr. T when he like just sees just the punch <laughs> coming. I still have, I have images of when I would box with Danny all the time. Him putting his chin down, looking at his eyes. I still see it and then throwing crazy punches. See, I just... can never box because I would never, as much as I learned, I would never remember to just simply tuck my chin in. Yeah. I a... would have all the technique in the world and, I, and then, because I've taken boxing, like we've all, everyone at the table and most of the listeners, like we've done some form of 
self def- not like on a Rogan level where like we're right. black belts and shit. Right. But you take the lessons, you feel good about yourself, and then one day you spar and a guy just puts your lights out and you're like, you didn't tuck your chin. Like it's something stupid like that. Yeah. I did that when I used to work out when I thought it was helpful. We would do we would go <laughs> Tuesdays was like takedown night. It was it was jujitsu, but every Tuesday was just nothing but wrestling takedowns. And then afterwards, you all got pizza. And we got, but God, I like little that, league. That's when um little league. That's when I threw up and uh, <laughs> little Jonathan Lipnicki uh, choked me out. That was that time. Oh, when you just forget, when you just forget how much physical work is in physical work. Let me ask you a hypothetical question. I don't know how to handle. it. I'm being serious. Okay. At a grocery store close to me. Okay. That remain nameless, but it rhymes with mouths. Okay. There is a guy that sits outside the grocery store and he's well, well, he's not like dressed like a hobo. He's dressed in like a t shirt and jeans, regular shoes, and like sunglasses. And he's just sitting there like a guy on his break, hanging out. Right. Every single time I go, it started with this guy with his arms out, like, huh? Huh? Like arms out, palms up, like, can you believe it? As I'm walking towards him, but I'm holding a baby. Right. And I don't know who the fuck this guy is. Right. And even if I do, it takes a long time for you. And you know this when people go, hey, man, if they've seen you on TV, your instinct is to think like, you know, the person and go, hey, what's up? And then you realize, oh, it's just, oh, I don't really have to talk this long. But this guy's going, huh? Huh? And I straight face the guy and I just go in and I'm thinking, where the fuck do I know that guy from? And it turns out I don't know him anywhere. He's just a hustler guy. Okay. I go back like a week later. I'm wearing a shirt that says Westwood Wrestling. And then on the back says, there will be blood. There will be sweat. There will be champions. Uh, He must have seen me get out of the car, get the baby. Again, I'm holding a baby. Right. He must have read the back because as I'm walking towards him, he gets in a wrestling stance. Like, ah. Like, like only if I saw you (laughs) and you were wearing a wrestling stance. Uh, you were wearing a wrestling t-shirt. Right, right. I would like kind of do it to you, but then even that would be that, weird. Yeah, yeah. But, that would but it's so yeah, yeah. it's such hey, a hey. weird hustle, like the and that's like the bane of my existence is that the good hustlers make you make you uncomfortable that you're not engaging them. Like, whoa, why it's got to be like that? Like, do I know? So now today I go back to Malf's, right? And the guy goes, "Hey, man." That's kind of fucked up, man. But he's a big smile on his face. And I look, and for a split second, I go, ooh, like I went to go, what's fuck? Because he's a huge smile. And that split second, he goes, hey, let me talk to you for a second, man. And I'm like, fuck. I go in the store. Now I got to go out the other side of the store so I don't see this guy. Should I, hypothetical question, should I smash this guy in the face with a bat? <laughs> That's. I realized my hypothetical was stupid, and I, I just thought of this problem but I had right he's now. There every well, time. What do I do? Do I go to the, the management of the grocery store and go, you got this guy outside. Every time I come in, he's bugging the shit out of me. Or they're going to look at me like, ah, look at Mr. Fancy Pants. Can't talk to – no, it's not like I can't talk to You him. should try this. this is, I'm just making who, – who knows? I mean, I, I could – whatever move he's doing next time, you, you mirror it. So if, if you go hands, Jesus' hands out where he's like, hey, buddy. Go. But then I drop a baby. Oh, that's right. You have a baby. So, so that makes me so crazy. Yeah, I would. I, because I think, of the baby, I, I, would, I would. I feel like that's prey. where I would say something. I feel like it's more predatory because he knows I can't go. I need you to get the fuck away because I'm holding a child in my hand. Yeah, that's a whole different. Yeah, that's where I would. Solo, and this is. I'm not like being. I'm I would not, do a thing like like a movie where you have the baby, and then you have a <laughs> pistol. And you're just walking. Like, That's what I'm asking you, John. <laughs> like, where you can just I borrow your baby, pistol? Like, I'm gonna get out of here. Let's hire somebody to stand where he hustles. Hire yeah. some, hire somebody to stand where he hustles. Yeah. And and just run him off his corner. We should hire dueling like hustlers. Your, are, are there professional like <laughs> Kiki's food truck park? Run him over. Are there professional? I just repeat everything you say because you could hire that person. So when the guy goes, "Hey, Rich Little," they go, "Hey, Elon Gold." Hey man, you gotta stop doing that. You gotta stop doing that and just have them mimic. Yeah, they're called little brothers. Yeah, yeah. So we need to hire somebody's little brother just to to contact that guy. What's the yeah? Me- the baby adds a whole different. We did a podcast. We were sitting right here. Bill Burr was here, and I was where you are. My garage door was open, and a girl walks right there where the baby's jeep is, and goes, "Hey guys!" And it's like, who says that? Somebody that knows you. But now she's in the garage. She had to go across that whole lawn, through a yeah, gate, yeah, through you an have arbor, a bunch of, it's hard through to, a path. You can't get here. And then she's here. And she's like, hey. And we have uh, black ants. 
we have an aunt in our family and we have a family friend. Like there's four black people that Maddie and I both think of right now that just from far away without our glasses are we're like, is that that's not 